We use chemical equations as a symbolic representation of what happens to atoms during chemical reactions. Let's now look at how we can use them to more accurately represent processes that involve aqueous ions, ions that are dissolved in water. This type of equation is known as an ionic equation. An ionic equation is a type of chemical equation. We use it for situations in which aqueous ions exist in order to represent the fact that the ions are separated in the water and not stuck together as they would be in the solid version of the compound. A simple example, the dissolving of sodium chloride in solution, would be represented like this. When you're writing ionic equations, there are a couple of things to remember. I'll run through them using magnesium bromide as an example. First, only substances that have separated into ions when they dissolved in water are written as separate ions. All other compounds are written as normal. That includes uh, solid ionic compounds, undissolved or precipitated, uh, covalent compounds, metals, gases, they're all written as normal. So if we represent magnesium bromide dissolving, the magnesium bromide on the left is shown as the complete formula because it's a solid and the ions are bonded together, while on the right of the equation the ions are written separately because here we're representing the fact that they've dissolved and have separated into solution. Second, as with any chemical equation, the atoms must be balanced on the left and the right of the equation. Here we check that there's one magnesium ion and two bromide ions on each side. Notice that the stoichiometric coefficient of the bromide ions on the right hand side is a big two, representing two separate bromide ions. On the left hand side in the formula, there's a small two that comes after the bromide because we're representing that there are that many bromides within the formula rather than separated out. Third, we have to show the charges on the separated ions. If I were to write this equation like this, without charges, it would be incorrect since plain Mg represents a neutral magnesium atom, when in fact it's a magnesium ion that we have here. Remember, an ionic compound is made of ions in a lattice when it's in its solid form, and those ions are still ions when they dissolve and separate in water. A little bit of a side note here, when we write the complete formula of an ionic compound, when it's a solid for instance, we don't explicitly write the charges on the separate ions, so MgBr2, there's no charges shown there. That's because the charges on the cations and the anions balance each other out in that compound to make the overall compound neutral. However, when it dissolves in water, the cations and the anions separate from each other and so they're no longer neutralizing each other's charge. So when we show them separately, we need to write them each with their proper charge. Fourth, in the same way that you balance atoms on the left and right of the equation, you should balance the total charge on the left and right of the equation. Remember conservation of mass. We can't lose or gain any whole atoms in a chemical reaction, but neither can we gain or lose any electrons. So whatever the total charge is that we start with on the left, it should remain the same on the right. Here on the left we have the neutral compound MgBr2, so that's a total charge of zero. On the right we have two plus from the magnesium ion and two lots of one minus from the two bromides, so that adds up to zero overall and that means that we have the same total charge on both sides of the equation. Doing this is a good way of checking for mistakes in your equations. Ionic equations can also help us to better understand or represent what's going on in some reactions, such as single and double displacement reactions. Let's take an example. Imagine copper reacting with silver nitrate to give copper nitrate and silver metal. Now the first thing is to write the ordinary chemical equation like this, with subscripts showing the states. Copper nitrate is soluble, so when it's produced it dissolves straight into aqueous solution. Alright, now let's think about it in terms of aqueous ions. Which of these compounds or elements physically exists as separate aqueous ions? Well, it's the ones that are marked with the aqueous subscript and which are ionic. The others are solid. So let's rewrite the equation showing those compounds as separate ions. There are two silver nitrates, so that gives us two separate silver 1 plus ions and two separate nitrate ions. On the other side, the aqueous copper nitrate will become one copper 2 plus ion and two nitrate ions. 
The metals, copper and silver, are not ions. They are metal elements made of neutral atoms, shiny and malleable and with other metallic properties. They are also solids and not dissolved. Okay, what we have now is called a full ionic equation. All the ionic aqueous species are shown as separate ions and everything else is shown as normal. Can you see anything that doesn't change during this process? That is, something that is the same on the left and the right of the equation. Well, it's the two nitrate ions. They're there at the beginning and they're still there unchanged at the end. This means that although they're present, they aren't actually changed by this reaction. We call this type of ion a spectator ion. It's there, present, watching if you like, but it doesn't actually take part in the reaction. The other species do take part. The copper goes from neutral copper atoms, the metal, to copper ions, and the silver ions, from the silver nitrate, turn into neutral silver metal. So in order to get to the bottom of this reaction, we can cross out the nitrates, since they aren't changed, and we just show the essence of what's going on. And what we have now is called a net ionic equation. Visually, if you were doing that reaction, this is what you'd see. The aqueous silver nitrate is a colourless solution, and here you can see the reddish copper wire sitting in it. Now, copper 2 plus ions, which are one of the products, have a blue colour. So as the reaction proceeds and the copper metal gets turned into copper nitrate, the solution becomes blue. Simultaneously, the silver ions in solution that you started off with are precipitating out as silver metal, so the copper wire gets covered in a fur of metallic silver. Okay, here's one for you to try. This is a double displacement reaction. A solution of lead 2 nitrate is poured into a solution of potassium iodide, resulting in aqueous potassium nitrate and a yellow precipitate, that's a solid, of lead 2 iodide. Uh, first, write out the full ordinary balanced equation with complete formulae and subscripts. Then rewrite it to show the aqueous ionic compounds as separate ions. That'll be your full ionic equation. And finally, cross out any spectator ions to give the final net ionic equation. Pause the video and try to do this yourself before you watch me write it out.